Haugen. In America, approximately 1,500 people die each day from a terminal illness. This is a July 2015 statistic from an article titled Death with Dignity, written by Larry Beresford, the author of Hospice Handbook and editor for Growth House. Every one of us has heard of someone with a terminal illness that caused them constant pain, whether we knew them personally or saw a story on the news. The United States Department of Health should allow physician-assisted suicide for those with terminal illnesses. First, I will tell you why not allowing physician-assisted suicide is currently a problem. Then, I will present a way for this to be legal without causing more problems. Let's start with what not allowing physician-assisted suicide does to people suffering from terminal illnesses. Not allowing physician-assisted suicide in all states makes people with terminal illnesses suffer more than they have to. In an August 2016 article written by Peg Sandine, a PhD in social work titled How to Access and Use Death with Dignity Laws, she says that over 500,000 people die from terminal illnesses in the United States in just one year. Many of these 500,000 people could have chosen to end their life on their terms and die with dignity. In a November 2016 article titled Euthanasia, written by Jeffrey Hendricks, a Master of Arts in U.S. History and Senior Researcher for Right to Health Care, he says that in 44 states there is a law against physician-assisted suicide. This is a problem for the people who wish to partake in physician-assisted suicide that live in these 44 states because you have to be a resident in the six states that allow physician-assisted suicide to partake in it. Because this is not legal in all states, many people are suffering longer than they have to. These laws prohibiting assisted suicide make it very difficult to obtain for those who want it. What the law is now in many states is harming those suffering from terminal illnesses because they don't get to die with dignity and choose when they end their life. What the law, or, these laws do not hurt anyone directly, but those suffering with terminal illnesses are in more pain than they need to be. These laws also indirectly hurt those, their family and friends because they have to watch their loved ones suffer. Many of the people who would wish to partake in physician-assisted suicide are people who would die slow and painful deaths if this was not an option. Now that you know a problem is it exists, let's look at a solution for this problem. The United States Department of Health should allow physician-assisted suicide for those who qualify. Only people who have been cleared by psychiatrists and have been given a diagnosis of six months to live or less by at least two physicians will be able to partake in this process. This way, the people who are severely depressed and wishing to end their life will not be able to because of the mental evaluation. This will be put into place by a national law allowing physician-assisted suicide. This solution is feasible because it is allowed in many other countries and a few U.S. states. This solution will also be easy to adopt because it is allowed in these six U.S. states. In a 2011 article titled, The Way Assisted Suicide is Legalized by Evelyn Delbecki, a member of the editorial board for the Journal of Health Law, she says that physician-assisted suicide is legal in California, Colorado, Montana, Oregon, Washington State, and Vermont. This solution will solve the problem because those people who qualify will be able to end their pain and die with dignity. Also, not many people qualify for physician-assisted suicide. Peter Jarrett, the author of several health-related books and a recipient of the American Medical Association Award for Journalism, wrote in April 2016 an article titled, Physician-Assisted Suicide, Is It Ethical? He states that in Oregon, 155 prescriptions for the life-ending drug were given in 2015 and less than half of them were actually taken. This solution is also desirable for those who wish to partake in physician-assisted <coughs> suicide. In March 2015, teen article titled Antipsychotics and Mortality, written by Yoon Young Park, a graduate teaching assistant at Harvard School of Health, she says that the average cost for the lethal medication is between $35 to $50. This is far less expensive than the hundreds of thousands of dollars that the family would have to pay in medical bills for their loved one if this was not an option. This solution will only affect the people with terminal illnesses and their family members. This, it is ultimately a decision of the one suffering from the terminal illness because no one should make this decision for them. The public should support this change because it does not affect them and they should not have a say in someone else's life. This solution will benefit the people suffering from terminal illnesses. In a 2014 article written by Michael H. White, the president of the board of the Death with Dignity Education Center, he says that physician-assisted suicide should be a lawful medical procedure 
for competent terminally ill adults because it is a compassionate response to relieve the suffering of dying patients. We should all agree with him on this fact and let the dying patients die with dignity. In conclusion, I first told you why not allowing physician assisted suicide is currently a problem and then I presented a way for this to be illegal without causing more problems. The United States Department of Health should allow physician assisted suicide for those suffering from terminal illnesses. Out of the 1,500 people who die each day from a terminal illness, many of them could have ended their suffering earlier if this treatment was available to them. 531. One, two, three.